59 HO2 What Faith Is Part 2 Well you can open your Bibles again to the 11th chapter of Hebrews this is faith seminar and the Lord dealt with me to just get back in this particular seminar to the ABCs of faith amen and so that's what we're doing now Hebrews 11 1 said now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The sixth verse, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John and, uh, you know, Jesus had appeared unto the disciples. Thomas is not with them. And so it said, began reading the 24th verse, But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nail. In other words, we'd say the nail hole. Amen. Or the wound, you see. And uh, thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. And after eight days again, the disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace, be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. Now turn to the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. And we read here concerning Abraham and his faith. You can read from the 17th chapter of Genesis the first few verses if you want to read the, the complete story of it. But here, beginning with the 17th verse, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Now, our subject is what faith is. And as we said sometime, the best way to find out what something is is to find out first of all what it isn't. And so we're talking about first of all what faith isn't. And right at the moment we're talking about that there is a difference between natural human faith or head faith and uh, heart faith. See, the Bible said, with the heart man believeth. Or in other words, spiritual faith. Now, uh, I always called it uh, natural human faith. In reading after others, I see some call it sense knowledge faith. Well, they're saying the same thing I'm saying or I'm saying the same thing they're saying. Either one of them is correct. 
You see, that's the kind of faith that Thomas had was natural human faith or sense knowledge faith or faith based upon his physical senses. What he could see. What he could feel. Jesus, I want you to notice, did not recommend the Thomas kind of faith. Notice he said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Now, he never said a word about him being blessed. Amen. <laughs> you notice what he said? And the, and the Greek word translated blessed is also, can also be translated happy. Blessed, blessed, or happy. Hallelujah. Is he that has believed and yet he's not seen? Well, you see, uh, he saw Jesus crucified. And then Jesus, now is raised from the dead, he appeared to the disciples, and Thomas wasn't with them. They said, we've seen him. He said, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Now, you can see that's natural, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. I, I just don't believe it. And not only do I not believe it, but I won't believe it. Unless I can see the print or the wound of the nails in his hands and put my finger into that and see his side and thrust my hand in his side where that Roman soldier thrust that Roman spear up under his left uh, rib cage and punctured his, the heart sack and there came out, you know, the blood and water. Now, Jesus said, Thou hast believed because thou hast seen me. Blessed are they which have not seen yet do believe. I didn't see him crucified, but I believe he was. I didn't see him die, but I believe he did. I didn't see him be raised from the dead, but I believe he was. I didn't see the wounds in his hands, but I believe they're there. I didn't see the wound in his side, but I believe it. I believe that his blood was shed for the remission of my sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I'm happy. <laughs> I'm blessed. Praise God. Because my faith is not based on what I saw. My faith is based on what God's Word said. You see, Paul writing to the church said, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. I believe that because I read it in God's book. Amen. I said amen. amen. Paul said, I like to put it this way, the Holy Ghost said through the Apostle Paul writing to the church, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Again, that he died for our offenses, our sins, our offenses. He died for them, not for himself. He didn't have any. He didn't sin. Our sins were laid on him. Now, I don't understand all that, but I believe it because the Bible said it. Amen. No, that doesn't make him a sinner. You have to sin to become a sinner. But the Word of God said that himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Well, I don't mean he's sick and had cancer and TB and tuber tuberculosis and the brain tuber and pigeon toad. <laughs> Amen. No, our sins and our sicknesses were laid on him. How did he do that? I don't know. But I just believe it. Praise God because the Bible said it. Are oh, you listening to me now? And so, he was raised from the dead. Died for our sins. Raised for the, from the dead for our justification. That I might be set right with God. Glory to God. And because he is raised from the dead, I am set right with God. Because I believe it. Now, every man could be set right with God if he just believe it because it belongs to him anyway. But thank God I believe it. Now why do I believe it? Because the Word of God said it. I heard the Word of God preach. I believe that Word. Hallelujah. Now, notice that that's the kind of faith that Abraham had. I want you to notice what it said about Abraham's faith here in this fourth chapter of Romans. In that 18th verse, it says that he believed according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. In other words, he believed according to what the Word of God said. Amen. And then I want you to notice that it said, he staggered not at the promise of God. I want you to notice it said that he was fully persuaded that what he had promised. Then his faith was not based on what he saw. His faith was not based on what he felt. His faith was not based upon what his physical senses told him. Because you know as well as I do 
that his physical senses told him, old man, you're not going to become papa. You're 100 years old. Your wife's 90 years old. She's beyond the age of childbearing. That's what his physical senses told him. You know that as well as I do. But God had said something different. God had given him a promise. God had given him his word. God said to him, you can read it as I said in that 17th chapter of Genesis, God said to him when he appeared to him and said, I am the almighty God. Hallelujah. Well, now you see, that's the English translation. God revealed himself, you know, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament by different names. And here actually in the Hebrew he said to him, I am El Shaddai. Hallelujah. See, El Shaddai. They translate, I'm the Almighty God. Now, El Shaddai actually means, and very often, you see where it just says God, well, in the, in the Hebrew it's El, E-L. And so he said, uh, I am El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Hallelujah. The all-sufficient one. So the translators translated that he said, I am Almighty God. Well, thank God if he is almighty and he is, then he is more than enough. Then he is the all-sufficient one. And so he said, thy name shall no longer be called Abram. His name was Abram up till now. Abram means the father of nations. But thy name shall be called Abraham, the father of many nations. Then he's already named the father of nations and he and Sarah don't have any sons. There's no nations in sight. <laughs> and now then God appears to him and said, I'm El Shaddai, and I'm changing your name to Abram to the father of many nations. For the father of many nations, now get this, have I made thee. Now notice he didn't say, I'm going to make you. I have made thee. See, faith is always in the present tense. Now faith is, the, the text said that in Hebrews 11, well, now faith is, is, present tense. Now faith, present tense. You see, the text said here in Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Not I'm going to. I have. And notice the last statement of that verse, talking about God, calleth those things which be not as though they were. God calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now he's, of course, a faith God. And so he's acting in faith. And he calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now here is one particular area where you receive more persecution than any other area from those who are not knowledgeable of the word. And then, of course, there are always those that go to extreme and excess beyond the Word of God. Well, that doesn't do any good, you see. But uh, if the Word of God says it so, call it so, praise God. See, I said, if the Word says it so. Amen. Call it so because the Word calls it so. So, his faith, Abraham's faith, was based and built on what God said. God's word. And then God's promise. Notice that it mentions the word promise here. He staggered not at the promise of God. Notice that he said that he was fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able also to perform. I've said it for a good many years, and I'm going to keep on saying it. Find scriptures that promise you the things that you're praying for. Find scriptures that promise you the things that you are believing for. Now that's where folks get into trouble. Is they get out beyond the word of God, they're going to believe for all kinds of things. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, in crusades, I, I don't take calls. I usually, you know, most of the time speak twice a day. And sometimes we have three different speakers and I'll just speak one time a day. But I just, unless a case of emergency or somebody I know, because people will just call you and want to talk to you all the time, and, and nine times out of ten, they don't want a thing in the world. Now, now I'll give you an example. My wife and I talk in the morning, and then in the afternoon we were lying down resting, then going to get, up, get ready for the night service, and the phone rang. She answered it, which she always does. And she just said, well, brother, she didn't say, brother, Hagin's not here. She didn't lie about it. She said, he's not available. 
And I just told her, I'm not available. So if I'm not available, I'm not available. And so this lady just persisted. She had to talk. Oh, I need to talk to him. Well, my wife, and just kept on talking. I could hear the sound of her voice. I couldn't distinguish words, you know, but I could hear it. Telephone, you know, my wife had the phone to her ear. And finally my wife said, well, maybe I could help you. You know, if it's a prayer request, why well, give it to me? I'll turn it over to him. He'll pray about it. Maybe I could help you. Well, I so said, I just wanted to ask him if the service started at 7.30 tonight. She can ask my wife. That's, no, all she won't do is just talk to me. Bless her darling heart and stupid head. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, that's foolish. Most, most of the time, those calls are foolish. But I remember one time, there was a, a call came through, and I don't know how he found out where we were. But uh, I think we were in Pittsburgh, and he called from, uh, I think it was Detroit. And, and so he wanted to talk to me. Well, again, my wife said, Brother Hay is not available. Oh, I need to talk to him. Well, maybe I can help you. Well, he said, you know, I read brother, one of Brother Hagin's books about faith. And I decided that I'd just have faith for a new van. And so I just placed my order for a new van. And I decided, well, Ben, as I'm believing anyway, I'll just put everything on it. So he got everything that you could put on a van. You know? And so he said, they've notified me that it's come in and I don't have a dime. What am I going to do? Now, it wouldn't be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. I said, it wouldn't be funny. It wouldn't be funny. My wife said, how long have you been saved? said, about four months. How many Brother Hagin's books have you read? One. How many tapes you listened to? None. But he already knows all about faith. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, he said, you know, all you got to do is just say it. <laughs> well... You know, like I said, that would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. He's not going to believe God. Just a young man believed God for a van with everything on it. After all, what's he basing his faith on? What promise? Abraham had the word of God for it. Now you write this down. Before you get off on some kind of a faith tangent, write down, do I have the word of God for it? Is it based? Is my faith based on the Word of God? If it's not, it's not scriptural faith. You see, his faith was not scriptural faith. It was not based on the Word of God. I don't know whether it's the will of God for him to have a van or not. Probably it wasn't. You see, there's some things in life you'll have to ascertain in your own private prayer life what's the will of God. Amen? I said amen. amen. Faith begins where the will of God's known. Faith is built and based on the Word of God. Your faith will never be any greater than your knowledge of the Word. Amen. And so, have God's Word for it. Abraham believed according to that which was spoken. That's what it said. In other words, what God said. He staggered not at the promise of God. He was fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised. Now, it didn't say he was partially persuaded. Don't think it worked. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. So then his faith is based on what God said. God's word, God's promise. So then have God's word for it. Now number two, notice this. It said, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now see, he has God's word for it. God appeared to him, said, I am the almighty God. I'm El Shaddai. Your name will no longer be called Abram, but Abraham. For the father of many nations have I made thee. And it said here, that he believed according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. But then, his what is revealed by his physical senses contradicts what God said. Now you'll have to walk by natural human faith in much of life. 
Like I've said many times, if you start across the street and see a car coming, you better believe what you see. If you step out in front of that car, we all may have some place to go tomorrow that we don't care about going. That's to your funeral. You better believe it. But you see, when God said it, see, that's a problem. We get so used to walking by the natural that when it comes to the spiritual and the supernatural, it's hard for us to change over there. And it's all right to walk by natural faith or sense knowledge faith until it contradicts God's word, then you walk according to the word of God. Now, Abraham had a condition that existed in his physical body and the body of his wife, Sarah, as revealed by his physical senses that contradicted what God said, didn't he? Because it said he was about 100 years old and he said he did not, being not weak in faith, he considered not. 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 His own body now dead. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was strong in faith. Glory to God. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised is able to perform. So he considered not the contradictory circumstances. Or he considered not what his physical senses said to him. I said this many times brought me through many a hard place if you're expecting to go through life and if you think teaching and preaching faith and the so called faith message means you're never going to have any trials and never have any troubles and never have any hard places you're just going to float through life on flowery beds of ease you must be awful stupid <laughs> and you didn't get that from us I don't know where you got it but you didn't got as many faith teachers I ever heard teach Amen. No, I want to reemphasize that the word of God said the afflictions, and the word affliction in the Hebrew means the test, the trials of the righteous are many. But the Lord delivers them out of most of them. No, all of them. The 91st Psalm, the Lord said, I'll be with him in trouble. He didn't say he wasn't going to have any trouble. He's already told you ahead of time you're going to have trouble. Sure you're going to have trouble. Now why? Well, nothing else. The God of this world, the devil, is going to see to it that you have trouble. He's on the job 24 hours a day in all of his cohorts. And there's always enough unbelieving Christians around you to help you out, too. <laughs> Give you plenty of trouble. Amen. But I'll be with him in trouble and deliver him. Thank God. Hallelujah. I said thank God. Hallelujah. And so... You see, it's faith that sees you through. Faith that gives you the victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. This has brought me through many a hard place. I said it, and then I read where Smith Wigglesworth said it. But when I read where he said it, it just strengthened me in what I was already doing. I don't know how come me to say it. I got it from this fourth chapter of Romans. But I said it as a teenager, as a young Baptist boy. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe. And through the years, I've had a, great, a lot of experience and a lot of opportunities to practice that over and over again. And it's brought me through many a hard place. I mean, when everything around you said it isn't going. I mean, when... When something come along and knocked your head right where your feet were a few minutes before. Or vice versa. And, and, and the devil said, you might as well throw the sponge in the ring and give up. You know what I mean by that expression? You might as well quit. It's all over. It's all over. But I just simply stood there and just refused to move. And just simply said to myself, if I was by myself, I said it out loud. You need to be careful saying some things out loud in front of others. It's like casting pearls before swine. You see, some folks think they've got a lot of faith, don't have any sense, and they're always and no wisdom, 
and they're always going around spouting off, making so-called confessions, you know, and they really don't have any faith or any sense or any wisdom or anything much, except a bunch of foolishness. No, I very seldom in front of others, unless you just ask or pinpointed or just ask a point blank question, say anything. I say it when I'm off by myself. To the devil. That's that's the one you've got to deal with. Amen. It's not people, and they'll give you plenty of trouble if they can't keep him working. Say it out loud if I'm by myself. I'm not moved by what I see. Man, I'm seeing plenty. What I see said the jig's up. You know what I mean by that expression? Some of these colloquial expressions you may not understand. I may have to interpret them for you. You know what I mean by the jig's up? I mean it's over. I mean you're whipped. I mean it's done. You might as well quit. You ever been there? That's the way it looks. You can't deny it. It's there. That's it. No use sticking your head in the sand and acting like it's not there. Maybe it'll go away. No, I just simply looked it right in the face and knew it was there but and didn't say it's not there. But I said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. Man, you can feel every kind of a feeling there is. Oh, brother. And that's the thing that defeats a lot of Christians. When they feel good, hip, hip, hooray, glory to God, God's on my side. Amen, I've got it made. Praise the Lord. The very next day, you, you see them, their face is long, and they've lost everything. You'd think something awful's happened to them. Perhaps their mother-in-law's moved in on them to live forever. <laughs> or some of the kinfolks died. The way they look, the way they act. What's wrong with you? Well, I've lost the victory. I know, I've talked to them. Lost the victory, yeah, lost the victory. How you know, yeah, well, I don't feel like I did yesterday. I never go by feeling. I could care less about how I feel. Smith Wigglesworth said, the only person in the Bible he ever read about that went by feeling was deceived. Jacob went by feeling. He said, well, it, 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 it feels like Esau. <laughs> didn't he? I said, didn't he? Amen. Smith Wigglesworth said, I can feel any way I want to feel any time I want to feel that way. And you can too. You just start feeling sorry for them. They don't nobody like me. The whole world's against me. And, and you, you, you start feeling that down, don't you? Well, the devil's got me whipped. I'll never make it. You start feeling like that and start saying that and you'll feel it more and more. I'm not moved by what I feel. I know in talking to people individually as a pastor, you know, counseling with your members, you know, who were prone to walk by feelings instead of faith. And, and, and when I told them about my feelings, their eyes got, you, you, you mean you, you feel that way too? Well, yeah, I said sometimes when I get in the pulpit to preach, if I was going by my feelings, I would request prayer. <laughs> Amen. Now, it would be wonderful if you could just feel up all the time, you know, and on cloud nine. But you pray and read the Word and get ready to preach. And, 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 and at times, you know, just feel a great and on other times don't feel a thing in the world. And if you went by feelings, well, you'd be, say, well, sure, I want all you to stand and reach your head out and pray for me and backslid. I know I am and tell the way I feel. Nobody couldn't feel this way without being backslid. <laughs> I must be far from God. But I don't do that. What do you do? I act in faith. I say I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved. I'm moved by what I believe. I believe what the Bible said, the greater ones in me. Hallelujah. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And so I act in faith. And I start out and the anointing comes then. And it's not very long till you're feeling good and juicy. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. I said amen. This whole thing's a faith proposition, friends. We walk by faith. Second Corinthians 5, 7 said, We walk by faith and not by sight. I do not think it would be an injustice to that scripture to interpret it like this. We walk by faith and not by our physical senses. What we see, feel, or any of our physical senses. Amen. 
Well, now then, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, and he's about a hundred years old, he's yet to dead to share his womb. So, he first, you see, number one, have God's word for it. Don't, don't, don't go off, you know, trying to practice this without having God's word for it. Then he considered. If he didn't have God's word for it, he could not consider all he wants to the contradictory, sir contradictory circumstances and it won't work you see because he don't have God's word for it put first things first the word first and then second once you have God's word for it do not consider the circumstances that contradict it see I'm not moved by what I feel my feelings contradict what God's word said I'm not moved by what I see what I see contradicts what God's Word said. I'm moved only by what I believe. Now, if I'm by myself, I say that out loud. If I'm around folks, I say that to myself. I say that sometimes just sitting right here while the service is going on because you've got all kinds of feeling. don't seem like you've got a speck of anointing. Man, you hate to almost to get up there. Any of you, pre- any of you preachers here? Preachers, pastors, are you here? You ever been that way? If you haven't, you ain't been fur yet. You'll get there. Just keep on. Amen. Amen. So, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I move only by what I believe. So, have God's Word for it. Faith is based on God's Word. You see, it's based on God's Word. It's built and based on the Word of God. And then, don't consider the contradictory circumstances. And then, notice what it said. He staggered not. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. See, that's the reason a lot of folks are staggered and they're in unbelief. See, we walk. Didn't say we stagger by faith. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. It said we walk by faith, not by sight, not we stagger. If you're staggering, you're in unbelief to some extent. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Well, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, dear Lord. Here Christians talk that way. Don't know where they're going. Don't know who they are. <laughs> Listen to some, uh, some of the TV, you know, uh, shows. Christian, you know. That's all. And uh, they, uh, they, there was a person, a minister, minister. Born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, had spoken in tongues. And they said they, they, they had to get out, you know, and, and find out who they were. They didn't know who they were. I got so disgusted with it, turned over and started watching a Western. <laughs> got more blessed from that Western. I knew that wasn't so well. It may have been built on some facts. I tell you, you'd be better off sometimes just to watch a Western than you would be some so called Christian shows. If you're not careful, they'll fill you full of unbelief and doubt. Didn't know who they were. Why, bless God, any born-again child of God doesn't know who they are. Listen to another time, here's a woman on there, one of those Christians, singing, you know. And she got to talking and they got to interviewing her and she talked about, you know, she had to leave her husband and go off out, you know, to try to prove something. I don't know what she's trying to prove. In my mind, she just proved she's an ape or an imbecile or something. Because she said she didn't know who she was. And she had to get out here and find out who she is. And I've got to build my own ministry. Well, I'll tell you, a married woman's got a pretty good ministry if she'll just stay with it. Don't shout me down now. Don't you believe they're women ministers? Sure I do. But if you're a married woman, got a family, your ministry first right there. God never called any woman to neglect her husband. I could read a medal here for a while. <laughs> never called any woman to neglect her husband. Here's a woman, you know, God called her to preach. She's gone all the time. I know of a certain case. Never at home. Well, her husband got into it with another woman. Now then she goes all the time talking about how bad he, I don't want to hear. If she tells me that, I'm going to say, you're the one that's bad. You ought to have been there taking care of him, bless God, and sleeping with him. Instead of running all over the country. 
trying to make a name for yourself. Don't shout me down. I'm sure get quiet. You go talk it this way, don't you? This poor woman on TV didn't know who she was. Had to find out who she is. Well, if she'd have known the Bible, she'd know who she is. She's a child of God if she's born again. I'm a child of God, praise God. I'm born again. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Most asinine thing in the world for a Christian to say, I don't know who I am. They just got through denying the Bible. Amen. I said amen. amen. I'm a new creature. Are you? Amen. I've been born again. I told you I could meddle here quite a bit. I better hush before I get started, though. I can just tell that you're coming on. I, 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 don't, know whether it's, I don't know whether it's anointed of the Holy Ghost or whether I'm about to anoint myself. But there's some things that need to be said. Amen. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. Don't know whether it helps you or not, but it preached me happy. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's see now. Where were we? Where were we in our discussion here? Let's see. Sometimes some of those side journeys helps us as much as anything. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Like I said, the word said we walk by faith. It doesn't say we stagger by faith. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. If we're staggered, it's because we're in unbelief. Now you can stagger. Amen. But notice, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. So find scripture that covers whatever you're endeavoring to believe for and praying for. Get the word of God for it. Base your faith on God's word. Consider not the contradictory circumstances and give glory to God. Begin to praise God and worship and honor Him. He gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that what He had promised he was able also to perform. Now I want you to notice that it said he was not weak in faith and it tells you what weak faith is. It's staggering at the promise of God. But that he was strong in faith and it tells you what strong faith is. Now you see, most Christians, here's what whips them. They say, well, I know I don't have much faith. That's, that's where my problem is. That's, that's it. See, instead of letting the Bible answer you and finding Bible answers, to, to spiritual questions. They try to figure it out in their noodle. You know what your noodle is? That's this bump here. Sets on your shoulders here. And so that must be it. That must be it. No, no. Most all Christians are strong in faith. They just don't know they are. And they don't act like it, and that's what whips them. Now notice what he said. Weak faith was staggering faith, wasn't it? Weak faith staggered. What did he say? Strong faith? There are two ingredients of strong faith. Number one, giving glory to God. Giving glory to who? God. Brother Hagen continues this message on side two. Please turn the tape over. See, not me. You're not man giving glory to God. What does that mean, giving glory to God? Saying, praise God for His promise. Glory to God for His word. Hallelujah, I believe the Word of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God for His Word. Glory to God for His promise. Giving glory to God. And then number two, being fully persuaded. Of what? That I'm able to do it? No. That He is able. Being fully persuaded that He is able to do or perform what He promised. How many of you folks are fully persuaded that whatever God said, He can do it? Let's see your hand. Huh? Sure you are. Well, then you're halfway strong in faith. 
Amen. Well, now then, how many of you can give glory to God? That is, you can say, glory to God for His promise. Well, then you are strong in faith. Stand up, everybody. Stand up, everybody. Say this out loud because you believe it, not because I tell you. If you just said because I tell you on the mouth of hill of beans. But if you really believe it in your heart, it'll, it'll, it'll work. Your heart really agrees with the words you speak. Say it out loud. I am fully persuaded... That what God has promised, He is able to perform. He's able to do it. I'm fully persuaded that what God has promised, He is able to perform. I can give glory to God. I will give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. However, if that's all you do, see, you must have the of the Lord. Well, then you're strong in faith. I said you're strong in faith. Now say it again. I am fully persuaded that what God has promised, He's able to perform. I can... And I will give glory to God. I am strong in faith. For it is written that Abraham was strong in faith. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he's able to perform. Hallelujah! Glory! Now that's a thing that's going to put you over. You may be seated. Faith, as I said, what, what is faith? Well, real faith is based and built on the Word. What is faith? Faith is acting on the Word. You see, when Abraham was fully persuaded that God, God had promised he is able to farm, he's acting on what God's Word said. When he gave glory to God, he's acting on what God's Word said. And he held fast to that. You see, it doesn't do any good to hold fast to a confession if it's not based and built on the Word of God. See, just confessions per se don't work. But when they're in line with the Word of God, they do. Amen? Now, faith is the result of the Word dwelling in us. I don't mean the Word committed to memory, memorizing scriptures, that's good, but I don't mean that. When I say the Word living in us, I mean the Word lived, the Word practiced, until it becomes a part of ourselves. Well, how does that come about? We meditate in it. We think deeply into it. We feed upon it. The Word becomes a part of ourselves. This Word of faith builds into us confidence and assurance. Hallelujah. That's the way it works. Now then, let's talk a little bit more before we come back again to what faith is. Let's talk a little bit more about what faith isn't. We have pointed out to you that it's not hope. We pointed out that it's not natural human faith. You see, uh, hope says I'll get it sometime, but faith says it's mine. I have it now. Natural human faith or sense knowledge faith says, well, when I see it, when I feel it, I'll know I have it. Now, that's the kind of faith I tried to get healed by. I know I stayed bed fast 17 months. I didn't know the difference. We're not, we're not criticizing people. For if we did, I'd be criticizing myself. We'd not be belittling people. For if we did, I'd be be belittling myself. But I'd pray. I was bed fast. The doctors gave up on me. They said I had to die. Five doctors. 
and I'd pray. Well, Matthew, you fellowship with God. He's going to bless you because you're His child. And I'd get blessed. And you get blessed. You, you feel lifted up. There's a state of ecstasy. You see? And basing my faith on my feeling, I'd say, well, I believe God's heard me. I, I believe God's heard my prayer. I, I feel like He has. Because, you see, I felt so good, you know, spiritually. Then I'd start examining my heart. Now, it's not beating right. Uh, this will date you. Y- younger generation can't appreciate this. But I'd say a lot of times my heart was beat, beating like a team out of Ford hitting on one cylinder. Now, anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, see, see, just only a few do. We got you dated, you know. <laughs> Those old team out of Ford, you know, a lot of times they'd be, they'd be sort of like a, I remember my grandfather, his brother. I just knew a boy about oh, eight, nine years old. And so he bought a new Ford, you know, in, you know, uh, 1927, 26, 27 Ford, you know, T model. That's what they had, Model T. And so he, and you had to crank them, you know, didn't have to start, you know, he cranked the thing, cranked and cranked, lived out about oh, three or four miles out of town, and got it started all right, but the thing was missing. You know what I mean by missing? Spark plug not hitting or whatever they had. You know, what did they have? They had those old, uh, what do you call them? Magneto. And, and, and so it was just a jumping and a jerking, see? <laughs> and the whole thing, you know, the fenders are just jumping and jerking. You know what I'm talking about? See? Well, he jumped and jerked all the way into town. <laughs> and so he went into the Ford garage so he'd bought the thing. See, it's new, just a few days old. Drove in, what's wrong with this thing? Well, the fellow lifted the hood and he said, it's a missing. He said, why, he said it was all there and I left all of it. <laughs> He thought he meant the motor was missing. <laughs> well, those old T models would do that, you know. They'd just jump and jerk, and that's the way my heart would do. No rhythm to it. Just jumping and jerking. And I'd start crying. And I'd examine my, my lower part of my body particularly. I had some use of the upper part, but I was practically totally paralyzed. And then I'd start crying. I didn't just do that one time, folks. Dear Lord, I've done that so many times until it's... It's embarrassing to tell it. I mean, you couldn't count the time. Seems to me like I must have done it thousands of times. You're bed fast 17 months and nothing else to do 24 hours a day, you know. Because nearly every day, you know, you'd pray and talk to God and be blessed. And, and I believe you heard me. See, but my faith was based on what I felt. You see, your faith can't even be based, based on the blessing of God because you feel blessed. Your faith's got to be based on what the Word said. Are you listening? And so then I'd examine my heart. Oh, I've done it so many times, seemingly like thousands of times. And, and my body, and then I'd start crying. So, oh, Lord, oh. And I, I'm not making fun of me, you know, but I, I just started crying. I, man, I wept many a tear. Then I cried and prayed and prayed and cried and 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 I don't even tell half the story. And you can do a lot of praying and you can do a lot of crying and a lot of feeling sorry for yourself but I don't get the job done. I stayed just like I was. Now why? Because you see my faith is based on my physical senses, my natural human faith. Not based on what God's Word said. Now then, there is something else that's very closely associated with natural human faith. And uh, some people call it mental assent or mental agreement. Now I read first, and I try to give people credit where I read first, you see. Because some other people say the same thing. But after that I was healed and raised up from the bed of sickness and out into the ministry, he I read some of John Wesley's writings. John Wesley was the uh, founder of the Methodist Church, you know. Now, in his writings, in his journals, and, and incidentally, I have some uh, in, in my library over here in the office, some of our Rainbow graduates that's been to England, they got into some old books, and, and I've got some uh, some more writings of Wesley that's, uh, that's uh, 100 years old, over 100 years old. And it tells right there when the book was printed. 
you see. And, and some that, uh, that I've never seen in circulation read yet. Some of his writings, some of his journals. And, and so anyway, I read this though. That John Wesley, you see, he was, to begin with, he and his brother Charles in the uh, Anglican church. And his, gra- his father was an Anglican minister. His, his, his grandfather an Anglican minister. And he and his brother Charles came over here to the United States as missionaries to the Indians down in the state of Georgia. And they spent a year there. And according to West, his own words were flat failures. Well, he just said his failures. I added the word flat. <laughs> Amen. That's a colloquial expression in Texas and Oklahoma. And uh, so discouraged, they boarded a ship and went back to England. On their way back, on board ship, there were some people uh, that uh, they called them Moravians. And as Wesley said it, they taught us some of the deeper things of God. Well, now in my opinion, this is strictly my thinking, I think that he and Charles just then got born again, didn't know the difference. So then Wesley got back to England, and he began to preach in the Anglican Church of the Church of England. And he began to preach some of these things, you know, that he's learned. And it didn't set well with him. They got up and threw him out of the pulpit right in the middle of one of his sermons. And he said that, you know, they buried the dead in the churchyard in those days, that he got up on his father's tombstone in the churchyard and finished his yard and finished his sermon. But now Wesley made a statement that registered on, my, on me that I've never forgotten. He said, I have come to see that so many in the church, now he was talking about his own church, but it would be true concerning any church. You see, so many in the church are not really saved. He said, they only mentally, now listen to the difference, they mentally agree. That's where I first heard that statement, somebody make that statement, and I picked it up from him. Others call it mental assent, mental agreement. Well, now, mental agreement and mental assent looks and sounds so much like faith that many people can't tell the difference. But there is a vast difference. And faith is not mental agreement. And faith is not mental assent. Now, Wesley said, I see that so many in the church do not really have faith in God and in His Word and in Jesus Christ. They mentally agree that Christ is the Son of God. They mentally agree that, they, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. They mentally agree that He was raised from the dead for our justification. But they go right on living just like they did. It doesn't change their life. He said, when you really believe with heart faith, it changes your life. Can you see what he's saying? When you really believe in your heart, with your heart, that Christ is the Son of God. When you really believe that He died for your sins according to the Scripture that is raised from the dead and your justification, it changes you. It, and it changes the way you live. Amen? Now, when, when I read that, then I said to myself, that's, some folks are the same way when it comes to healing. They do not really believe in their heart. Or with their heart. See, the Bible said, with the heart man believeth. Not, not the head. No, you know your heart's not your head. No, no. With the heart man believeth. And you see, when you really believe in your heart, it makes a difference. Now, I saw in my own case, after I read what Wesley said, that not only did I go just by natural human faith, but very closely associated with it, I went by, by a head faith or a mental faith. I was mentally agreeing to certain things, not really believing them in my heart. But that day came, you see, when I said to the Lord in prayer, after Mama had bathed me, I was still helpless enough, I could not bathe myself. My mother bathed me and left me propped up on a couple of large pillows. And I had my Bible open to Mark 11, 23 and 24. Something on the inside of me told me that's where it is. But I couldn't figure it out, make it work for me. Been bed fast now all these months. And, and so I said to the Lord, I got my Bible open there in front of me and I'm propped up on those. She'd propped me up on those two pillars. And, and I said, uh, now when you were here on earth, you said 
Right here it is, Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever you desire? Well, I desire well body. You said when you pray, I pray. You said believe, and I believe. Now I said, dear Lord Jesus, you know, not in tones of arrogance, but tones of care, of kindness. Dear Lord Jesus, if you stood here by my bedside in the natural, physically, like like Mama, I could see you like not like I can see Mama standing there. And you reached down and picked up my hand and held my hand in your head, hand. And you said to me, Son, your problem is you don't believe. I said, I'd have to say to you, dear Lord Jesus, you're lying about it. I do believe. Now, when I said that, he spoke to my heart. Now, thank God for the Word. The Word of God speaks to our hearts. And the Word of God's of foremost importance. But remember that if you're born again, you've got the Spirit of God in you. And Jesus plainly said in the 16th chapter of John's Gospel, talking about the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, and he talks about in the 14th, in the 15th, and in the 16th chapters uh, of uh, John's Gospel, uh, the work of the Holy Ghost in us. And he said, when he is come, he shall not speak of himself. So he does speak, doesn't he? I said he does speak. The Holy Ghost speaks. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he heareth, that shall he speak. What do you mean what he hears, he speaks? Well, whatever he hears God say or Jesus say, he never speaks of himself. The Holy Ghost never speaks of himself. But he's in you. If you're born again, he's in there. Amen. I said amen. We need to learn to listen to him. Now, it's not not time. People listen to all kinds of voices and thought it was the Holy Ghost. You ought to be able to ascertain some of them easy enough. Nothing to worry about the flesh. Or their soul is nature crying out. But immediately, and I knew it was the Lord, it was the Spirit of God, you see, of course, on the inside of me, in, in here, in here. Right, right down in here. The Bible calls it your belly. The Bible calls it your innermost being, right in here. I heard these words just as plain. You do believe. See, the Holy Ghost is repeating what he heard Jesus say. I'm talking to Jesus. You don't pray to the Holy Ghost. You pray to God and in Jesus' name, and you can talk to Jesus. Glory to God. And so, he said, you do believe. See, he didn't tell me you don't believe. Because I did believe, to some extent. You do believe, all right, as far as you know. Now, that's one of the greatest revelations that came to me the 8th day of August, 1934. We need to go back and learn the ABCs of faith. You do believe all right as far as you know. Well, I knew nothing about faith. We, you know, we didn't have no tapes. You didn't have tapes and cassettes in those days. And books like we do now, there may have been some, but I didn't know about them on that subject. And I, what I learned, I learned from the Word. Now, I've read others and it encouraged me and supports what I already saw from God's Word. But the, the basic principles I learned from this book. And what the Spirit of God said to me. You do believe all right as far as you know. Now that means this. You cannot believe beyond actual knowledge. Well, a fellow said to me, I'm going to believe God give me that house. It was about a million dollar home, about 800 and some odd. And this is several years ago. I'll probably be two million dollar home today. Well, I said, do you know that God wants you to have that house? I mean, what, what scripture are you basing it on? Well, None. Well, do you have knowledge? See, that's what the Lord said to me. You, you do believe it all right as far as you know. Do you know that God wants you to have that house? No, but I'm going to believe for it because I want it. I, I don't think you are. Well, now, don't you confess that off on me. I'm, I'm not confessing anything on you. I mean, the ignorance and stupidity is already on you. <laughs> hey, Amen. I'm not confessing anything on you. That's God I'm going to believe for. And I said, you let me know if you ever get it. Never heard from him. He never got it. Bless his heart. What would he done with it if he had it? Don't shout me down. I just call him preaching real good, see? And folks like that, you know, gives a bad name then to folks who have a genuine ministry. Are you listening? Amen. That's not faith at all. See, he said to me, by the Spirit, in my Spirit, right here, you do believe all right as far as you know. All right, that means this, that you cannot believe beyond actual knowledge. 
Or we'll say it another way. Sometimes you say things a different way people see it and get it. Faith begins where the will of God's known. Faith begins where the will of God's known. You do believe all right as far as you know. Well, that means two things then. I need to gain more knowledge of God's Word. If I know more, I will be able to believe more. That means I, I believed as much as I knew. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So he said, you do believe all right. See, he didn't contradict me because I knew I did. Sure I did. You do believe all right as far as you know. But that inward voice said, but the last clause of that verse, Mark eleven twenty four, goes with it. See, I'd only gone through three-fourths of it. What things have you desired? Desire well body. When you pray, I pray. Believe that you receive. Believe. Well, now if there's a one, two, three, four, five, six steps up here, I take three of them. Stand there looking perplexed. What's the matter with you? I don't understand why I'm not up on the platform. Well, you've got to take the other step. See, and that's what happens to many people. They just take one or two. It doesn't work. They don't arrive, so they give up on the whole thing and say, well, it don't work. Don't ever say that because God's Word does work. Just admit you didn't work it. That last clause goes with that, and then he quoted it on the inside of me. And ye shall have them. Man, like a flash, I saw it. I don't mean I saw it here. I mean I saw it here. That's where you've got to see it's in here. I saw it. I began to say out loud in the privacy of my own room by myself, I see it. 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 Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. You remember those two prayers in the first chapter and the third chapter of Ephesians? And in that first chapter he prayed that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. One translation reads, the eyes of your spirit. Amen. In here, your spirit, be it enlightened. That's the way we need to pray for people. The eyes of my spirit became enlightened. I said, I see it, I see it, I see it. Now, like a flash. I saw it. I saw where I had missed it. I saw that I was operating in mental agreement and natural human faith. I saw the difference. No man taught it to me. I got it by revelation of the Spirit of God. And that's the reason I've stayed with it for 50 years. Won't give it up. If they were to take me and say now and, and tie me hand and foot and take a baseball bat and say now we're going to beat you to death. Unless you say it's not so, I'd say, go right ahead. I'll die saying it's so. Because blessed be God, it is so. Hallelujah. Amen. I see it. I said, I see it. I see it. What I've got to do is start believing. See, when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Well, in this case, healing. Then when you pray, believe you receive healing. Yeah, but I don't have it. I know, that's what I kept saying. Believe that you receive healing and you'll have healing. Now, when are you going to have healing? After you believe you receive it. When do you believe you receive healing? Before you have it. And that's true concerning anything else that God's Word promises. Now, I said, I see what I must do. I must begin to believe while I'm still lying here, bedfast, paralyzed. My body is partially paralyzed. But I must begin to believe I receive healing for the paralysis. I must begin to believe that I receive healing for the deformed heart. Then I said to Dr. Robertson, when he took blood from the end of that finger, they'd take a blood count, you know. My, my blood, I said, is there something wrong with my eyes or something wrong with my blood? It don't even look red. It looked orange. It flat looked orange color. And watery-like. Well, he said, son... uh, no, he said, I'll explain it to you in layman's terms. If he'd explained it in medical terms, he wouldn't understand it. He said, the white corpuscles have eat up the red blood corpuscles faster than you can build them up or we medically can do anything about it. In fact, I'll just be honest with you. If you didn't have the paralysis, if you didn't have the heart condition, this incurable, that's what he called it, this incurable blood disease alone would prove to be fatal to you. 
Go down the middle of the road and stay ready to go. Son, stay ready to go. He's a member of the same church I was. He wanted to be sure I was ready, you see. Stay ready to go. Unless a higher power intervenes, you have to die. Well, I said, I must believe I have no evidence that that blood condition has changed. I didn't quit my finger to see whether the blood's what it's going to do. I must begin to believe, begin to believe I receive healing for the incurable blood disease. Now, here's what I said to myself. and said it, you know, aloud, not, not real booming voice, but just enough that you could have heard if you'd stand close to the bed quietly, I said. Now, that's my part. Now, I want to show you where we miss it. My part is to believe that I receive. I've got nothing to do with the having part. He said, you believe you'll receive, and ye shall have. He does the having part. My part is just to believe that I receive. I leave the other up to him. Now, it, wouldn't, it didn't bother me. It didn't phase me a bit. Now, if, if it not manifested, now, here's where we miss it. I said... I see it. That's my part. I'm not going to touch that having part. I'm going to let him tend to that. I'm going to do my part. My part is to believe that I receive, so I begin to say it out loud. I believe I receive healing for the deformed heart. I believe I receive healing for the paralysis. I believe I receive healing for the incurable blood disease. I believe I receive healing in case I'd missed something, knew about those three, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And then very quietly to myself, I said, now it doesn't bother me. If I'm lying here 50 years from now on this bed, I still believe the same thing. Never change. Never change. See, when you change, you stagger, you waver, it don't work. I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect the manifestation to come as fast as it did. I knew it would come. But I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't touch that in thought life. That's not my business. See, Trump people try to tend to their business, God's business, and everybody else's business. And to get it all in a mess. No, my part is just to do what he said for me to do. My part, I saw this, is to believe I receive. His part is to see that I have it. That's not my part. My part is not to see that I have it. My part is to believe I receive it. Amen? amen. I said amen. 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 I believe I receive. So I went back again to saying it out loud. Nothing's out. Don't feel a thing. You talk about feeling. I had never got around Pentecostals yet, you see. I'm a Baptist. Didn't know you spoke to feel anything. Man, if I'd been going by my feeling, I would have declared that I'm the most unspiritual person that you've ever seen or met in your lifetime. I mean, I didn't even get blessed like I did other times when I prayed. Other times of fellowship and communion with God, you'd be lifted up. See, I didn't even feel any kind of a blessing. Anything. Just nothing. Just flat nothing. And I began to say again, I believe. I re out loud. I receive healing for the heart. I believe I receive healing for the paralysis. I believe I receive healing for the incurable blood disease. I believe I receive healing from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. And then, here was a voice that came against my mind. I recognized that. I, I could hear it. I mean, it's, it's just as real to me as though you shut your eyes and you hear a man's voice speaking. This voice came to his mind and said, Now you're a pretty looking thing. Claiming to be a Christian, now you've gone the line. I answered it back out loud. I said, No, I didn't lie. The voice came back and said, Yes, you did. It's out here somewhere. See, the devil's not in me. He may be in you, but he's not me. I said, he's not in me. That's the Holy Ghost in there. Glory to God. It's out here. This voice come. I said, yes, you did. You lied. You said you're healed and you're not healed. Look at your body. It's still paralyzed. Feel your heart. It's not beating right. See, the devil will fight you every step of the way to pull you back into that realm of seeing and feeling. I said, Mr. Devil... I didn't say I'm healed because I feel like it. If I'd said that, I would have been lying. I didn't say I'm healed because I look like it. If I'd said that, I'd have been lying. I said I believe I'll receive my healing. 
Now, if you won't argue about it, you go argue with Jesus about it. He's the one that said it. In case you can't read it, I'll just read it to you. And I read it to him, Mark eleven twenty three, Mark eleven twenty four. Just read it to him. Went back to praising God then. Glory to God. I believe I'll receive. Hallelujah. Now about that time on the inside of me again, I heard these words. The Holy Ghost. He heard Jesus say it, so he said it in me, because that's where he is. He said, uh, Now you believe that you're well. You know, you're going to have to believe you're well before you ever get well. You know, you're going to have to believe that you're saved before you ever get saved. Are you listening to me? You know, you're going to have to believe that God hears and answers your prayer before the manifestation ever comes. Now you believe you're well. That inward voice, I said out loud, out loud. I certainly do. I sure do. I sure do. On the inside. Well, get up then. Well, people ought to be up 10.30 in the morning. Now, ordinarily, that'd be the case. Now, all kinds of thoughts, like fiery darts flashing across your mind. How are you going to get up? How is a paralyzed person going to get up? Oh, I know exactly. I know exactly. Though Jesus is there in person, they can see him. It's the same Holy Ghost that's operating through him. When Jesus said to the man, Rise, take up your bed and walk. He said that. He's no better. He's bound. It was when he made an effort to arise that the healing came. The healing didn't come to him, and then he got up well to glory to God. No, he acted on Jesus' word. When he began to act, see, faith's an act. Faith's an act. Faith's an act. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. When he acted on what Jesus said, well, you see, Jesus is not here in the flesh. But the Spirit of Christ is in you. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his, the Bible said. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's here. Glory to God. That man could hear what Jesus said with his physical ear. You're going to have to learn to hear with your spiritual ears what he says. He said, get up then. Now, how are you going to get up? I had no healing. I had to struggle. I had to pull myself. And then wrap around the bedpost and slide down the post till my knees are that close to the floor. Hanging on to that bedpost. No evidence. No sign. But I said it out loud again. I believe that I receive. And I want to announce. I said in the presence of the Father God, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. And all the angels that may be here present. And I want to call the devil to record. And all evil spirits that may be present. I'm in a room by myself. That according to the word of God, according to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, I believe I'll receive my healing. Now when I said that, something came down on me, struck me in the top of the head. Somebody asked me what it felt like. I've been saying this for 50 years, never been able to improve on it. Never been able to change it. I said it then, I said it now. It seemed like I can feel it yet. It felt like somebody up above me is pouring a pitcher of honey on me. It, it was good. It was blessed. It was sweet. And then it just oozed. Just, just like fingers of honey. You know, I could feel it just, and it's warm. Just a real warm glow. And it run down over my head. And it went down over my body. And it went down my arms and out the ends of my fingers. And when it got, see, I had no feeling. And I could look down there and see my feet, but from my waist down, if I'd been going by feet, I wouldn't have known I had anything down there. And it went down my limbs and out the ends of my toes. And for just a second or two, wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't ten seconds, it felt to me, in fact, this picture flashed across my mind, it felt in my limbs, my legs, like they were ten million pins, you know, straight pins sticking in there. It hurt so bad that I could have cried if it hadn't felt so good. <laughs> now that sounds like a misnomer, doesn't it? But boy, you don't have any feeling at all. It, 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 it feels good to even hurt. I guess what happened, that momentarily all those nerves and all were reactivated, you see. And that, that warm glow just oozed. See, it didn't run fast. It just oozed down me. Oozed. <laughs> Amen. And went out the end of my toes. And when it did, I was standing straight with my... And Baptists didn't do this. Not in the Baptist church. With my hands up, praising God. And I've been healed... 
ever since then. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, that's wonderful. That worked for you. Same Bible belongs to you. Same Bible belongs to you. Same Bible belongs to you. Same God belongs to you. Learn to listen to His Word. Learn to listen to His Spirit. And you cannot be conquered. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't know whether it helps you or not, but it preach be happy. Woo! Glory. It wouldn't take much for me just to have an East Texas brush arbor spell. Praise God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for the Word of God? How many of you are believers? Just see your hand. Just put your hand up. Well, that looks like everybody. This is a faith seminar. Keep your hand up and say it out loud. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. Hallelujah. Now put your other hand up and praise Him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The voice of Kenneth Hagin Ministries is amplified around the world through the Faith Seminar of the Air radio broadcast, all Faith Crusades and Faith Library books and tapes. Other dynamic outreaches of this international ministry include The Word of Faith, a free monthly magazine, Rama Bible Training Center, a school to prepare men and women for full-time ministry, Rama Correspondence Bible School, a study program designed to equip the layperson in God's Word, and the Tape of the Month Club, which sends subscribers the latest messages from this ministry before the release to the general public in our Faith Library collection. For further information about Rama Bible Training Center, Rama Correspondent School, and the Tape of the Month Club, or to receive your free copy of our 24-page Word of Faith magazine and the Faith Library Catalog with a complete listing of Kenneth Hagen Ministries books and tapes, write Kenneth Hagen Ministries, Post Office Box 50126, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74150-0126. In Canada, write Kenneth Hagen Ministries, Box 335, Islington, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, M9A4X3.